good morning uh, again. So back at the job here in Springfield, the, the basically duplex building, we got the, the deck platform here sheeted, which uh, means putting the plywood or subfloor on the top of the joist. We covered it with this tarp because we knew it would be a while and it rains here in Oregon and I really don't want it getting any wetter than it needs to be. So we are back here today. Again, the first stages of what it takes to, to frame the walls for the building. And step one, obviously, is going to be to get this tarp over there. We're going to uh, lay out exactly where we want the walls to be. Now the exterior walls are 2 by 6. That means they're 5 and a half inches wide. All of the interior walls are 2 by 4. They are 3 and a half inches wide. With, you know, we will indicate those with snapped lines, chalk, blue chalk lines. This has to be right. If this isn't right and complete, then everything down the line is confusing, uh, potential for mistakes, uh, whatever. We will then cut uh, plates, the wall plates, upper and lower plates for the wall, and we will place them right in the position that they will go. We'll nail two plates together uh, all the way around. Every wall in the building will be plated. Some people can't stand it. They here they've got this empty canvas, remember, and they they need to they feel like they need to make it look like something happened. So they want to get a wall framed and get it stood up or, or whatever. I propose that it's better to spend the extra time to lay every wall out, and know all about what's going to happen before you even begin. Uh, that is faster. I will beat you every time if you want to snap out a line for one wall, frame the wall, get it up, snap out another line, lay it out, do that one, one another one, another one, another one. Uh, chances are you're going to have problems that I will not have because I've, I've figured it all out ahead of time and I know exactly where every wall goes. So. Then we will come through and lay all those walls out. What that means is we'll indicate with a pencil and square and tape measure where every window is, where every door is, where every stud goes, where there is a corner, uh, a partition. If corners are framed a certain way, partition is where there's an intersection. 79 and a quarter. There's another door. 27 and a quarter. Really, you know, I'll indicate that usually with an X and then a line. That also tells me there's a channel there and to look for which direction it needs to be. Then we can pick up all the plates, put them out of the way, but we'll label them. We want to know where they go. We'll mark the floor and the plate. It'll be uh, A, B, C, D, okay, with the arrow indicating which way the plates go. And that'll become clear when we get it all done. Walls uh, plated. 
we've got all our walls laid out, which means we've indicated where all the openings go, and we've got all our uh, framing components on, on layout. Now we need to get everything out of the way so that we can build a wall, right? That's the wall we want to build, the one on the end and the one in the middle. Everything else has to get picked up and moved. It's going to get picked up and moved right in this zone here where it's out of the way. What, we, what I need to do is have a system to identify them later so I know where they go. So we started over there on the exterior walls. I drew an A on the plate I drew, with an arrow pointing that way. I drew an A on the floor with an arrow going that way. Came to this next pair of plates, which when we pick it up, these two are going to stay together. So I drew a big B with an arrow and a B with an arrow on the floor. When it comes time to frame the wall, I go find number B, right? Might as well make this wall C. I'll draw a big C on it with an arrow and a big C on the oops, floor with an arrow. You get the idea. The idea is to make a mark that everybody can find later on. Um, and we'll know what it is, you know. If it's, uh, you know, we'll go D here, and then we're gonna keep going. E, F, G, H, I, J. And then he'll come and mark all the interiors. Now we can take all of these plates and put them right here in the middle, just like we did there. So all those go uh, as tight as we can here. And then we'll begin to frame the walls. So I'll, I'll take it down about whatever that far, that far. One nail's in it. It'll just spin as the ball goes up. I don't have to get up there and you know nail it with it up in the air. Okay, so let's stand this wall up. Let's get I don't know. Um, probably don't need everybody, but eight, ten people. The idea is for it to go nice and smooth, you know, spin. Yeah. Yeah. So nice and smooth so we don't <laughs> knock it off the edge. Everybody works together and watch out for nails, okay? There could be nails sticking out now.
those exterior walls up the two ends and we built this firewall. The firewall is a it's a two hour firewall. It has there's two walls there, sheetrock between them on the on the inside of those, and there will be obviously sheetrock on the outside on the living space inside. Four layers of 5-8 sheetrock and an airspace in between those two walls equals a wall that fire is going to take a while to burn through, and that's the idea. So then we built all four of these other walls. The, the, what you know, I would, if this firewall weren't here, I would have built these first because you always usually build the longest, straightest walls first and fill in the ends. wall obviously means it's the outside of the building it's becomes part of the envelope we call that that creates this uh, cocoon for the interior these exterior walls are two by six this interior wall here is two by four it's only three and a half inches thick that's what a two by four is the two by six is five and a half inches thick and the reason we evolved to this uh, recipe is for more insulation in the exterior of the building I don't know, maybe early 80s, somebody might argue that, but it seems like the transition took place somewhere around that era. You can sort of tell how old your house is by how thick the walls are, right? Anywho, um, you can see here, these framing members, these are called wall studs. And we have a bottom plate, obviously at the bottom. These wall studs are nailed into a top plate at the top. Um, at, above this top plate is a cap plate. So we have the top plate of the wall all tied together with a cap plate. It's another 2x6 nailed into this top plate. You can notice the spacing on all these framing members allows us to, to put this wall sheeting on the exterior or the interior and um, have the edges of these sheets break in the middle of a stud. That's why we, when you hear the term these studs are on 16 inch center center line, 16 inch stud space. Above a sheet of plywood that can go four feet and land in the middle of this stud. All the edges of the sheeting and sheetrock all need to be supported. They need to land on a framing member. So this is an opening frame in the, in the wall. Uh, we have window openings, door openings. So we came across with these wall studs, they were support, they're supporting the structure up above uh, into the top plate. Well, what happens here? We cut them off. We eliminated two um, typical wall studs and created this opening. We need to support this um, top plate in this area where we remove the full length studs. You do that by running a header. Trimmer is underneath the header. King stud is the outside framing member that goes all the way to the you know, like a typical stud. It's at the outside of the framing for the opening. And then down here, we've got these short studs that we cut off, right? To get this opening in the wall. We call those cripples. We may have a cripple at the top or the bottom. Um, and there may need to be some, in some cases, a cripple above the header, okay? To, to fill that rest of that distance, support that weight. Uh, and then this obviously is called a sill, window sill. Okay. So a header from side to side of this opening and then support underneath that header that translate, transmits that load to the bottom plate, you know, and uh, allows us to, to create openings and keep that, um, you know, load bearing capability of that top part of the wall. These roof trusses are running this direction. They all land on the front and the back long wall. That's where the trusses will bear. And of course, bigger opening, bigger header. Uh, greater load on the, above it, bigger header. Uh, you know, a lot to frame in the walls. We uh, you know, nailed the bottom plate down, put all the parts where they needed to go. Uh, you know, it's easiest to nail the openings together first before you nail all the studs. You nail know, the, the header, you know, trimmers onto the king studs, header into the trimmer. Uh, 
cripples going in, lay the sill in there, and then nail the rest of the studs in there, the wall channels and the typical wall studs. And then the job is, you know, let's get this thing square, let's get it perfect because we're going to put sheeting on it. Once we nail the sheeting on it, there's nothing going to change. We're locking it in place. I mean, that's the whole idea with the sheet. You know, we re, re, recheck, make sure it's on the line and bring it up or down if we need to. Then we square the wall. Basic technique here, find the mark top and bottom, uh, both ends, diagonally measure and make sure that measurements, you know, adjust it until those measurements are the same. If they are the same, it is square. The sheets on this wall, we can't put the end sheet on where Andrew's making all kinds of noise down there, because uh, <laughs> we have to raise the wall first and then we can put that last sheet on. Down here, the same, it's the same situation. We can't put that last, we can't fill the last bit in until we raise it up. So this is the top plate of the wall. You know, the building's nearly 60 feet long. It cannot be a continuous piece of wood. There's a point down there where this top plate stops and we run another top plate, another 20 foot top plate. Well, they need to be connected. Uh, they need to be tied together. That's part of the reason we use this cap plate to, to span those distances. The, the breaks where these uh, boards join uh, ends will have to be um, offset. They're only required to be offset 24 inches. I like to go as far as you can. And that makes the wall strong so it won't fall apart. I call it plumbing and, plumbing and lining the building. Uh, we have all the walls up, we have all the walls in place. Um, we need to make sure everything is straight, the outside walls are straight. By doing that, you know, following all our principles, everything should end up being plumb and square if the walls are straight. Uh, the long walls will go one end all the way to the other and we'll put a string on there and we'll make sure this the walls are the same distance away from the string all the way down so we'll go from one end all the way to the other up on top of that cap plate the top plate and you could you, you could put a nail straight off of the wall a certain distance and run it one end to the other i like to put it up on a block so it'll stay i know that it's going to be you know an inch and a half above the plate and then, and then we'll be able to gauge what the wall needs to do we'll just and I like to put that string an inch and a half on the inside of that this wall across the top. Why would I pick an inch and a half? Huh? So you can measure yeah. it two by four. Yeah, there's lots of things around here that are an inch and a half, right? I could find a board and shove it up there to gauge that you know most, a lot of these hammers are an inch and a half. And then we'll walk around with the level, making sure everything is straight up and down. If it doesn't need to move, we will lock it in place where it is. Locking it in place means nailing a 2x4 brace diagonally from the top plate to a bottom plate. Because if, if this is good, we don't lock it in place and we go move it somewhere else, it's going to move that too. So if it's good, we lock it in place, we need to move, we move it, and then 